Alrighty, well, good evening, everybody, and once again, it's cast time. Um, then let me, um, let me I'll go ahead and jump right in and intro the music real quick. Um, this is gonna be Old Tower, uh, The Lost Edelon. So it's, um, it's an old school dungeon synth, so just going back to that. Um, and uh, this is that, it was actually a last minute pick. Yeah, I, I just remember what I wanted. I remembered what I wanted to say. Um, it was actually a last minute pick. Otherwise, I probably would have gotten going on this cast sooner. It's 11.05 p.m. right now. Um, I actually could have I could have gotten this uh, cast started as early as 10.30 p.m. But um, this album here kind of showed up on my YouTube recommendations at the last minute. And um, it, was actually a, it was actually a better fit for this cast video than uh, my previous album. Uh, which I don't remember at the moment. But... Uh, but yeah, it, it then I yeah it it took about a half hour, about a half hour forty five minutes for the copyright check to come back. Uh, been having that problem since yesterday. Like, um, I'll do my usual. I'll download it. I'll download the video to my computer and then re-upload it to YouTube. Um, and when I do that, I basically get stonewalled. Like YouTube, it just it gets to a certain point, then I get a message saying copyright checks are taking longer than normal. But, you know, sit tight, or it, it, it gives me some kind of, you know, please hang on type statement. So, so let me go ahead and get that fired up. Um, and I do have a fair, I think this is going to be a fairly long cast. Um, and I do need to make one more check in the background. Okay, so it will, I should be good to go. Let's get her started. Um, well, uh, today did my usual. Um, just I tried doing my uh, idle game tour. Now I said yesterday that since some of these, okay, I gotta turn it down. Yeah, that's too loud. Okay, anyway, but uh, since um, I was actually uh, burning through a good chunk of these idle games in like around five or so minutes. Um, the original plan for today was to do the same thing. Um, did my usual on idling to rule the gods. That took me, actually that took me short of the normal like half hour, 45 minutes. Usually it takes me around an hour. Um, yeah, okay, and then that must be coming from my end. Yup. Keep forgetting at some point when putting this cast together, um, the computer jacks up my headphone volume up to the max. So, I turn that down. Uh, but yeah, like I said, um, I blame the rule of the gods. Got done sooner than normal. Um, and then went right into idle research. Um, a game that up until today usually only lasts me about five or so minutes. But uh, all of a sudden, I progressed far enough in the game to unlock something called, like, it's called freeze mode. Um, I, it's a it's a mode that I've never seen in any other idle game, but in here, you can you can enter freeze mode, which what happens is it halts your current progress. It just puts it on ice, um, in more ways than one. And then um, you go to this kind of kind of mini mode. It's like like kind of like a run within a run. It's kind of like a mini run. Um, you'll you'll start a. It, You'll start uh, you know, progressing like you do in an idle game, and you'll start getting this currency called Ice Potions. Um, which, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's kind of like end game currency. Like, in your main runs, uh, you'll get what are, you can get what are called Fire Potions. Which again, it's a, it's a pretty high end type of currency. But if you enter Freeze Mode, you'll start getting currency called Ice Potions. And then, and then uh, once you've uh, once you think once you feel you've progressed far enough in this mini mode, you just you end the mode. You'll go right back into your main mode, um, taking taking along however many ice potions that you've accumulated during that time. And then you can use those ice potions to, you know, for various upgrades on your current run. So 
but like I said, you don't, your, your current main progress doesn't start over. You're just picking up where you left off. So, like I said, it, I've never seen this in any other idol game before. It's pretty neat, pretty revolutionary. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, so I was just, I was probably on idle, re, idle research for about an hour working on this. You know, progressing in my norm, you know, progressing normally, freezing it, going into this mini mode, gathering ice potions, coming back, spending those ice potions to upgrade my current run, which, which yeah, it does help. So now my current run is progressing faster. You know, it, it, you know that kind of thing. So, um, and then, and then um, after that, I went over to Trimps. And kind of the same thing there, too. I was anticipating it being a quickie-dicky five-minute run. Um, apparently, you can you can, uh, you can can ascend in trimps as well. I think I got past zone 20, I think it is. And then you can go ahead and ascend if you want, or you could continue. I chose to ascend. So, kind of the same thing like other idle games. Uh, once you ascend, you start all the way over again, but you get a bunch of upgrade points that you could use to enhance your enhance your uh, next run so so I think I was on trimps for about a half hour 45 minutes again way longer than anticipated so. um and then after that uh, fired up idle champs and um I think I did a farming run or two but my current but uh my goal eventually ended up becoming a uh, there's a uh, in a lot of these uh these idle champ guides that I see in various streams, various videos, a lot of them re refer to a Azaka farm. Um, there's a lot of talk about a, a character named Azaka. But like I said, there's, you know, when they review characters and stuff like that, this character would be great for an Azaka farm. You know, this character is wonderful for Azaka runs. So, you know, stuff like this. So there's a whole lot of hoopla about this character. So my whole main goal uh, this time around was to start completing runs trying to get this character unlocked so um when i actually made it to the when i got to the tail end of my stream i finally managed to get her so so probably uh probably on uh, my next stream that's probably what i'm gonna work on i'm probably gonna just give her give her a good look um see what she's like um see what you know what kind of mechanics she has and all that so and then go from there and um this time around as far as the uh the videos go did my usual i think i listened to a little bit of brazilian doomer music a little bit of russian doomer music um and then i actually fired up a few podcasts that i haven't listened to in a very long time uh jim cornett was one of them but uh he's he's probably one of them, one of the worst ones or mostly because uh when he does sponsor plugs I think I might have said this in other cast videos, but he's actually uh, one of the most insidious when he when he plugs them. Like he will talk about sponsors as if they were a part of the normal conversation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink here real quick. Whereas unlike or I'm gonna kind of do my own little freeze mode here, but um. But unlike somebody like Henry Rollins, his podcast, which I also listened to, um, he talked about he talked about doing the Lollapalooza, the Lollapalooza festival back in the '90s. Um, but I think uh, the times when they plug sponsors, they warn you beforehand. Okay, and we have a sponsor, yay! That kind of thing. So that'll give me fair warning to fire up my uh, sponsor block add-on, the add-on for my browser. You know, start the you know start the sponsor plug here. And the sponsor plug here, um, submit it into their uh, the sponsor block database, and then and then all other people that want to check out this particular video, it'll automatically skip the sponsor plug for them. So, but anyway, like I like I said, um, Jim Cornette doesn't do that on his podcast. Like I said, he tries to he tries to plug his sponsors in such a way as to to try to you know be part of a m normal conversation. He tries to do it in such a way that you never even knew that he was plugging them. So, but when, um, when I kind of discovered that I've been tricked like this, 
Um, I tend to shy away from his podcast unless, uh, unless there were, like, small clips or something. So. And I think, um, he was actually talking about back in the 80s, um, I mean, Jerry King Lawler and, uh, Andy Kaufman having their wrestling matches and stuff. He was just talking about that. That kind of had me curious. So. And then, um, another podcast I started checking out was, uh, Jocko Willink. He's, um, he was a Navy SEAL. He's, a, I think, he was a SEAL commander. Um, he's commanded, he's commanded forces in uh, Rwanda, I think it's called. Um, I think he was in, he was in Iraq. He was in Afghanistan. Uh, he's an author. He's written books on leadership. He's kind of like, um, kind of like Dick Marcinko. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's another legendary Navy SEAL. He's. Uh, he was the one who wrote the Rogue Warrior book series. But Jocko's kind of like that, too. He's a, he's a legendary soldier. He's pretty famous. And he's also a jiu-jitsu practitioner as well. But yeah, I um, checked out one of his podcasts, which it kind of got me to thinking, you know, I don't I don't think, I, I think it's been a very long time. I want to say as long as a year since uh, they've actually they've actually put up a one of his podcasts on my YouTube recommendations. So it's been quite a while. So, but he, um, he had a couple of his, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu buddies on there. They're martial arts experts. I totally forgot their names, but they're, they're legends in jiu-jitsu circles. Um, and then after that, I, I kind of, I fired up the, uh, like yesterday, I fired up the the uh, Idol, the Idol Champs Peyton Slay podcast. It had a. Yesterday it was a live stream, so I, I think I, I think I pretty much caught the tail end of the uh, stream yesterday. But this time, I went ahead and watched it from like the very very beginning, and I got about as far as like halfway until, until I think it was like really 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 time for me to shut down and actually you know work finish up my blog post and had to get, you know, had to get the evening's grocery shopping done and all that, so yeah. It, it was like a five-hour stream, too. Uh, it's been a while since I've had one of those, and it was pretty amazing, considering um, I basically had bad sleep. Um, off and on, I think it was like, I think I laid down around, I guess around 3.30 a.m. Um, and then I officially woke up around I think it was around 12.30 p.m. But like I said, off and on, I had about nine hours of sleep. I, I kept waking up for one reason or another. Otherwise, yeah, uh, pretty much a fun build session today. Kind of wish you had more of huh? But anyway, um, pinball. Um, that is to say, there was none. I fired up FX3, and literally within seconds of me boot, trying to boot the game up, it crashes. Like, it, as in, it didn't even go to the title screen. Like, it, it crashes, like, almost immediately. You know, cause, and I'm, I'm hoping this isn't gonna be a, a permanent thing or something, cause. Otherwise, yeah, that's gonna royally suck, because usually when FX3 crashes, it's typically when I start up a table, or like in the, when I'm in the middle of playing one. And it sure as hell doesn't crash within seconds of me booting the game up. And then, um, Pinball Arcade, um, I got in it, it did work for about five or ten minutes, and then it crashed too. So, yeah, definitely a bad day for pinball. Yeah, not much to say on that. And then, um, one, one, uh, one major thing that happened yesterday, or yesterday, one major thing that happened today is, uh, one of my favorite channels, Alpha Beta Gamer, they came out with a new game called Scorn. Um, 
artistically, that game is fucking awesome. I and I, oh, let me let me let me get let me get this out of the way first. Um, as far as the gameplay mechanics, it ain't nothing special. It's like a kind of a puzzle adventure game. It like Tomb Raider. Um. Um, Legacy of Kane. You know those kind of games. You know you you pull this lever here to open this door, but you know, and then you run through the door, and then there's this other little puzzle here, and then. You know, there's a pressure plate, you stand on it, another door opens, but the moment you step off the plate, the door closes, so you gotta grab this big old rock over here, you gotta carry it over the pressure plate, drop it on top, and the door stays open, you know, you know, that kind of thing. So, like I said, as far as gameplay itself goes, I mean, nothing to write home about. It's, it's probably nothing you guys hadn't seen before. Now, but again, as far as the artwork, though, oh my god, it's fucking awesome. Some of the art, the animation, some of the cutscenes, it kind of it kind of reminded me a bit of Eraserhead, the the movie that I watched a few days ago. But uh, there's a, I guess uh, the art was inspired by a guy named H. R. Geiger. I'd never even heard of him, so I think I, I think I wikied him. Did a quick uh, looky look on the wiki. It's like, oh shit, like this guy was the inspiration behind uh. Behind Alien, um, Alien, I, I probably Predator as well. Um, no, wait, he was the. Uh, I think he was the main inspiration behind Stan Winston. Like I think Stan Winston, the legendary special effects guy. Um, I, I think, I'm guessing he practically worshipped the ground he walked on. Cause I'm, cause if you look, it's like I said, I think Stan Winston was the one who. Uh, he came up with the uh, alien concept. Um, I think he was the one who did the uh, effects on Terminator. And once again, I want to say he did it on Predator as well. But yeah, this guy took his took. But well, he took a lot of his cues from uh, from Geiger. Like I said, I did a I did a quick looky on the wiki on him. Um, I also uh, I think I did a quick uh, Google image search. Some of the artwork that he did, I'm like. Damn! See, this, I mean, he was pretty much the granddaddy of it all. And I also want to say that I think he was also the granddaddy of the cyberpunk universe. Because if you look at some of the, the way some of the shit's drawn on there, Blade Runner comes to mind. Um, you know, I, I've never seen this game. I've never seen the game, but Cyberpunk 2044. I'm pretty sure that he, his artwork was a big inspiration on that. It was Probably also a big influence on the uh, on Shadowrun. It's a tabletop RPG, you know, or hell, just the whole cyberpunk uh, universe in general. So I'm thinking, um, Geiger probably launched that. <laughs> Maybe the guy who. Uh, Whoever it was that did the artwork for Cookie Clicker, he must have taken his cues from H.R. Geiger, too. <laughs> I got a good kick out of that, putting this cast together. Which, yeah, uh, kind of off the subject, but, um... But, yeah, uh, Cookie Clicker was one of the games that I was planning on streaming, to get, streaming today, but I never got around to it. Um, maybe tomorrow. I don't know, but... But yeah, um, but yeah, like I'll probably end up watching more of this game, and um, I'm basically treating this game, this uh, this playthrough, as more of a movie, because like I said a few minutes ago, um, mechanically, gameplay, I mean, not you know, nothing really to write home about. But it, where it really shines though, is just the uh, the graphics and artwork and animation and all that. That's that on that. So, but yeah, um, but yeah, that's that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Um, I believe I said all the things that I wanted to say today. So, I'll probably just keep on watching that gameplay movie. So, 
But otherwise, hey, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me. I appreciate that. Always do. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow. So, but until then, thanks again for coming by, everybody. And see you all next time.